was in high school, I was graduating high school in 1968 when Humanae Vitae came out. And I have to admit, I had no awareness of it all, at all that it was happening. I was raised as what you might call a casual Catholic. You know, we would go to Mass on Sunday, say grace at Sunday meal, but that was, that was about it. When I went off to college, I thought religion was just something you left behind. And for probably no more than two years, maybe less than that, I didn't go to church. But an amazing, impactful event in my life was when some women came to Grinnell College in Iowa, where I was a student, and they were trying to get us to write letters to legalize abortion. And I honestly, I was 19 years of age, and I had never heard of abortion. So I went to the library, and I looked it up on the way to the meeting, and I read what it was. And I just couldn't believe women would do that to themselves. And it said in this article that the Catholic Church was opposed to abortion. I was very open-minded, honestly, about the whole thing, but it just seemed to me to be, I always loved babies. My mother had two babies when I was a young teenager. I had just become besotted with babies. And I went to this meeting, and I have to admit, I was doing my best, just as everybody else on campus was doing, to look like John Lennon. And I actually looked very much like John Lennon. I had had it all together. And I sat at this meeting, and again, the most sublime innocence in the world. I raised my hand and I said, I'm writing, I'm willing to write letters uh, to support abortion, but I just need to know when you think human life begins. Absolutely honest question. And they just started booing and shouting and saying, we don't need your kind here. We don't need you write to lifers here. And I'm sitting there saying, my kind, I, I, I'm, again, I look like John Lennon, just like everybody else in the room does. So what distinguishes me from the rest of them? Well, that was, I really felt like I got, you know, hit over the head uh, with a rock at that point and just started thinking deeply about things like why people were indifferent to the question about when human life began and why the Catholic Church um, had been, has always been opposed to abortion. And I just thought about it and people on campus kept coming up to me again, they, because I look like everybody else. And they sort of, you know, like, you're not weird or anything. You're like John Lennon, just like the rest of us. And why are you opposed to abortion? And, you know, I'd say, well, I don't know that I am, but you know, these are, these are questions that need to be uh, considered. So after, uh, you know, maybe a month or two, I was very opposed to abortion. That stayed sort of a steady state for a couple of years. I started going back to church, never thought about contraception, until I went to Toronto, where I was a graduate student in classical languages, and I decided, I talked to a, another graduate of Grinnell College, who was a professor there in Toronto, and he said, well, if you're really opposed to abortion, you should join the Right to Life movement. And again, I hadn't heard of the Right to Life movement since that incident in 1969 or so. And I, um, I went, got right on my bike and went downtown Toronto and to the Right to Life office and said, I want to sign up. And they said, what can you do? I said, I have no idea, but I'm going to be a teacher, so maybe I should make presentations. So I started making presentations in a lot, almost every week for a period of time in the high schools of Toronto and using the old Wilkie slides for abortion. And I would often get the question, well, what about contraception? And I would always say, oh, it's a completely different issue, a completely different issue. But then I met a young group of people as students also at the university who all of us had come back to our Catholic faith. Some were converts. And we all would decide we needed to know about our faith because people would start challenging us. We are Catholic. Um, do you really think women shouldn't be priests? Can you really accept the church's teaching on contraception? So we decided we needed to, to study these matters. So we had, a, we had a Right to Life group, we had a Thomas Aquinas reading group, we had a Vatican II reading group, and we had a Humanae Vitae reading group. So by the end of the time we read Humanae Vitae, we were all convinced that the church's teaching was true. Fast forward another couple years. I'm at the University of Notre Dame, my first job, and I'm uh, again, got involved in Right to Life, and I started doing counseling outside of abortion clinics. And I'd see all these young girls coming down. In fact, the Planned Parenthood was a couple blocks past the abortion clinic, and these girls would think this was Planned Parenthood. I said, no, this is the abortion clinic. So, well, we're looking for Planned Parenthood. And I said, we better pay attention because this is the abortion clinic, and this is where you'll probably end up before long. And they go, mm. And so I started getting it. I mean, it, it just seemed so clear to me that contraception led to abortion. I just had this epiphany. You know, and I thought, wow. And so I started doing, and this is actually at the same time that John Paul II's uh, Theology of the Body was coming out in spurts every Wednesday. And I had a colleague, a young uh, graduate student, who 
would feed me the latest L'Osservatore Romano printouts of the Theology of the Body. And I'd read those and then I'd teach them to students like a week later. And students were really buying it. It made sense to them. It made sense to me. So then I started getting invitations to do speaking engagements and all sorts of things. And I started doing it only on Humanae Vitae because nobody else was. And I said, you know, there's lots of people who are against abortion, but nobody else is doing the defend Humanae Vitae thing. So that's how it, it came about.